Thank you for the introduction. So block ciphers are building block for many cryptographic constructions such as hash functions, encryption schemes, max, etc. Block ciphers take an input a key k and another input x and output say an n bit output y. Uh, block ciphers are keyed permutations, so on a key k a block cipher would induce uh, a permutation. So throughout this talk I will be considering uh, n bit keys, n bit inputs and outputs. There are two popular approaches to designing block ciphers. One is the Faisal network. The other, which is the focus of this talk, would, uh, is key alternating ciphers. Uh, AES, which is the current block cipher standard, is a key alternating cipher. Uh, key alternating ciphers consist of repeated applications of public round permutations, and I will discuss them in more detail in a bit. So consider this phi round key alternating cipher that is shown. Uh, it is an iterated structure that takes in uh, a key k, a master key k, uh, and from that we can derive round keys k0 through k5 as shown in the figure. Uh, and then on an input x, we will uh, XOR each of these round keys in a particular round and then apply a round permutation that takes in an n bit input and produces an n bit output. Uh, more specifically, uh, for an input x, uh, compute x1 as x xor k0, k0 is, is the 0th round key. And then in the first round, we compute uh, the output of the round uh, x2 as p1 of x1, xor with k1, and so on and so forth up to round phi. And the output of this phi round key alternating cipher is going to be uh, x6, the output of the fifth round. So in this talk, we will consider key alternating ciphers with trivial key schedule. That is, all the round keys are going to be identical, so just uh, k. And we will also consider the round permutations p1 through pr to be ran uniform random permutations, independent uh, also, independent permutations. So in particular, this is known as the iterated Ivan Mansour construction with trivial key schedule. And this is because you can think of this as just an R round version of the Ivan Mansour cipher, which is uh, shown here for a trivial key schedule. So the security of block ciphers is traditionally considered under the notion of indistinguishability. In indistinguishability, in the ideal world, the distinguisher D interacts with a random permutation P, for which uh, it can ask both forward and backward queries, although I don't dep depict that explicitly in the picture. And in the real world, the distinguisher D interacts with a block cipher keyed with a fixed key K that is uniformly chosen from its key space. Uh, so the security of the IEM, the iterated Evan Mansour construction, can also be studied under the notion of indistinguishability. Again, here the distinguisher D in the ideal world interacts with the random permutation P, and in the real world interacts with uh, the iterated Evan Mansour construction uh, under a fixed key K. Since the round permutations of the iterated Evan Mansour construction is public, uh, we can also consider that the distinguisher D has access to these uh, public round permutations that are denoted as P1 through PR. However, one can uh, consider the security of block ciphers under a stronger notion, uh, a notion called indifferentiability proposed by Maurer, Renner, and Hollenstein. In this notion, one can ask whether an R round block cipher behaves as an ideal cipher under appropriate assumptions on the underlying primitives. So what is an ideal cipher? An ideal cipher is a block cipher such that for each key k, the block cipher under key k induces a uniform random permutation. So this is an idealized notion of a block cipher. And why is this useful? Block ciphers can be used in constructions where the distinguisher can have access to the key k. For example, imagine a block cipher based uh, hash function. Here the distinguisher can actually influence the choice of the key k. So for such notions, it is useful to consider uh, whether a block cipher can behave as an ideal cipher under appropriate assumptions. So let's look at uh, the definition of indifferentiability, uh, particularly in the context of iterated Ivan Mansour construction. So in the rest of the talk, when I say IEM, I mean the iterated Ivan Mansour construction with the trivial key schedule, that is all the round keys are identical. So in, in indifferentiability, in the real world, the distinguisher D interacts with the iterated Ivan Mansour construction, the IEM, and uh, the round permutations P1 through PR that I'll collectively denote by P. And in the ideal world, the distinguisher D interacts with an ideal cipher and an algorithm S known as a simulator that simulates these round permutations with access to the ideal cipher. 
So if the distinguisher D cannot tell uh, with high probability which world it is in, whether it is in the real world or in the ideal world, uh, then we say that the IEM construction is indifferentiable from, uh, from an ideal cipher. In addition, it is important to note that in order to show this, we need to show an efficient simulator S. So the IEM construction is indifferentiable from an ideal cipher IC if an efficient simulator S exists such that no efficient distinguisher can distinguish between real and ideal with high probability. Note here that the distinguisher D is information theoretic. In particular, this means that it is computationally unbounded, but we restrict the number of queries that the distinguisher D can make to its oracles. Uh, I would also like to emphasize that the distinguisher D can make both forward and inverse queries to its oracles, to the ideal cipher and to the round permutations. Right. Before I mention uh, how phi round uh, iterative in Munso cipher is indifferentiable from uh, an ideal cipher, let me mention prior work. So it is known that 12 rounds of iterative in Munso construction with trivial key schedule is sufficient to build an ideal cipher. This was work by Lamp and Soron. They also showed that three rounds are insufficient uh, in that scenario. So in this work, we show that phi rounds are necessary and sufficient. In order to do this, uh, we show a phi round proof. Uh, we show a proof for the phi round iterative and Munso constructions indifferentiability. And we show an attack on the four round construction. So in this talk, I will not be able to get into details on the attack. Uh, but uh, I would like to mention that our attack differs from previous attacks. Uh, in that we, uh, the oracles are not accessed in sequence uh, in our attack. Also, uh, the indifferentiability of IEM has been considered in another setting, uh, in particular in the idealized key derivation setting. So what we mean here is that the round keys uh, are derived through a cryptographic primitive, which is modeled as an ideal primitive, and hence this is known as idealized key derivation. So in that setting, it is known that phi rounds are sufficient to build an ideal cipher uh, from the IEM construction. This was worked by Andreva, Bogdanov, Dodis, Menink, and Steinberger. And uh, in recent work by Guo and Lin, it is shown that three rounds are in fact necessary and sufficient to build uh, an ideal cipher from the IEM construction with idealized key derivation. So let's look at uh, the proof of indifferentiability for the phi round IEM construction with trivial key schedule. So recall uh, there is a distinguisher D that in the ideal world will interact with the ideal cipher IC and an algorithm S that simulates the round permutations with access to the IC. And in the real world D interacts with the IEM construction with the trivial key schedule and the underlying round permutations. And in order to show indifferentiability of the phi round IEM from an ideal cipher, it is sufficient to show an efficient simulator S such that no distinguisher D that is computationally unbounded but can make limited number of queries to its oracles can distinguish between the real and ideal worlds with high probability. Right. In order to see how to build uh, a simulator S for such a setting, let's start with a naive simulator strategy. So the role of the simulator is to simulate these round permutations. So let's consider a naive simulator that on query PI of XI. So by PI of XI, I mean that the ith round permutation PI is queried on an n-bit input XI. Say this naive simulator just returns a uniform n-bit value as its output. So that's depicted in this picture. The distinguisher D queries the simulator S on PI of XI. The simulator chooses a uniform n-bit value and returns that as PI of XI. Uh, so let's consider a distinguisher strategy against this naive simulator. So what the simulator is doing is just returning a uniform n-bit value on queries it has not seen before. So again, in the real world, the distinguisher D interacts with the IEM uh, and the underlying round permutations. And in the ideal world, it interacts with the ideal cipher and this naive simulator S that is simulating the round permutations. However, all the distinguisher D can see is that it's interacting with the green box and a blue box, but it doesn't actually know whether the green box and the blue box are the IEM and the round permutations, or the ideal cipher and this naive simulator. So let's consider the following distinguishing strategy. The distinguisher D picks an arbitrary n-bit key k and an arbitrary n-bit input x, queries the green box on k comma x, and obtains some, uh, input, uh, some output y. Then what the distinguisher D does is essentially runs the 
iterated even manso constructions computation on this key k comma x using the outputs provided by the blue box. In particular, uh, the distinguisher d first computes x 1 as x x or k, then for i equals 1 to 5 queries the blue box on p i of x i, obtains some output p i of x i, computes uh, the i e m s uh, ith round output using uh, this equation shown here x i plus 1 equals p i of x i x or k and so on and so forth till, uh, till the 5 rounds. Then what the distinguisher does is it checks if this x 6 that it obtained by performing the i e m computation using the blue box matches the output of the green box matches y, it checks if x 6 equals y. So, what is going to happen is that in the real world when the distinguisher d is interacting with the i e m construction and its underlying round permutations this is going to exactly match because that is how the i e m computation even uh, construction even proceeds with its computation. However, in the ideal world when the distinguisher d is interacting with the ideal cipher and this naive simulator s that just returns uniform n bit uh, outputs on its queries this is not going to hold uh, the equation is not going to hold with high probability. So, this shows a distinguishing attack against this naive simulator. So, what can the simulator do? What can the simulator do to fix this particular distinguishing strategy? The simulator can do the following, the simulator can try to make uh, the x 6 that the distinguisher d obtained by performing the i e m computation on k comma x match the ideal ciphers output on k comma x. How can the simulator do that? Notice that the simulator has access to uh, access to i c the ideal cipher in this setting. So, the simulator can query the ideal cipher i c on this uh, input k comma x, learn the output y that the ideal cipher would have returned and then somehow choose the round permutations outputs that it returns to the distinguisher such that the calculation performed by the distinguisher would lead to uh, x 6 being equal to y. However, note that the simulator does not have does not know what k comma x is. In particular, the simulator does not get to see uh, the interactions between the distinguisher and the ideal cipher. So, how can the simulator learn k comma x? If the simulator can learn k comma x, maybe uh, as I mentioned, it can query the ideal cipher, obtain y, and choose its round permutation output such that the distinguishing strategy does not work anymore. So, how can the simulator learn k comma x? In order to see how, let us sort of unpack the distinguishing step. So, the uh, distinguisher first picked an arbitrary uh, key k input x queried i c on k comma x obtained y, then it computed uh, x 1 equals x x or k and then queried the simulator on p 1 of x 1. So, the bubble uh, on, the, on the left just indicates that the simulator notes that it has been queried on p 1 of x 1. Uh, it still returns say uh, picks a uniform n bit value y 1, assigns p 1 of x 1 as y 1 and returns that to the distinguisher. Uh, the distinguisher then computes x 2 as p 1 of x 1 x or k and queries the simulator on p 2 of x 2. The simulator again sees that it has been queried on the round permutation p 2 on input x 2, again chooses a uniform n bit uh, value y 2 as its output assigns p 2 of x 2 as y 2 and returns that to the distinguisher. Uh, then the distinguisher uh, computes x 3 as p 2 of x 2 x or k and then queries the simulator on p 3 of x 3. At this point say the simulator stops, it does not actually pick a uniform n bit value and at this point the simulator checks if x 1, x 2 and x 3 can be intermediate values of an i e m computation. So, uh, how can the simulator check if these can be intermediate values uh, in particular uh, round function round around output uh, of the i e m construction. The simulator can do that uh, by checking if y 1 which was p 1 of x 1 x or x 2 equals um, y 2 which is p 2 of x 2 x or x 3. This is going to exactly hold because this uh, comes from this equation and these two are going to match the value k, the distinguisher d used to uh, compute the output of the of the ith round. So, by this manner the, the simulator can check if x 1 through x 3 are intermediate values of an i e m computation. This part of the process is known as partial chain detection. 
So now that the simulator has detected this partial chain on a key k, uh, sorry, um, partial chain com comprising x1 through x3, what the simulator can do is now compute what this k is. The simulator can set k to be, oops, to be p1 of x1, xr, x2. Notice that the simulator knows all these values, either because it has been queried on those values or because it actually set those values, uh, and then set uh, k as this. Uh, as this value and then set x to be x1 x or k. Now, the simulator has actually learned k comma x that the distinguisher used. So, what the simulator can now do is detect the chain starting at x with key k as I mentioned, query the ideal cipher on uh, k comma x, learn y and somehow choose the round permutation output such that p i of x i um, uh, leads to the distinguishers computation uh, of the IEM on k comma x matching the ideal ciphers output on k comma x. So, let me briefly mention how the simulator can choose this p i of x i such that the equation holds. So, again uh, at this point the distinguisher d has queried the simulator on uh, p 3 of x 3. The simulator has not yet returned the value of p 3 of x 3. Say the simulator still chooses a uniform n bit value y 3 as its output but does not return this to the distinguisher. Instead, it holds it uh, within itself and then performs uh, the IEM computation to compute x4 and stops there. And now, it sets x6 equals y on its own, compute y5 equals x6 xr k just by rearranging this uh, equation here, chooses a uniform n bit uh, value x5 as its output for p5 inverse of y5. Uh, and stops again at that point. Notice that at this point uh, in the chain, uh, every value uh, at p1, p2, p3 and p5 have been set apart from p4. What the simulator can do now is adapt the value of p4 on input x4 such that this is equal to x5 x or k so that it respects this IEM equation that the distinguisher would use. So, this process is known as preemptive completion where the simulator is preemptively completing the chain such that it can answer the distinguisher's queries such that the distinguisher's uh, computation, uh, the IEM computation using the simulator will match uh, the ideal ciphers output on k comma x. Right, so what the, what the simulator should do is detect the chain starting at x with key k and preemptively complete the chain such that x x equals y. So, this high level strategy uh, that thwarted that particular distinguishing strategy is in fact uh, the high level strategy for an arbitrary distinguisher. The high level strategy is to perform partial chain detection and preemptive completion. So, note here that uh, the simulator that I showed worked against that particular distinguishing strategy for a distinguisher asking those queries x1 through x3 in sequence. However, an arbitrary distinguisher can interleave queries, can ask whatever it wants. In order to work against an arbitrary distinguisher, what the simulator would do is detect all partial chains of length 3, that is it detects paths uh, comprising of any 3 consecutive round permutations. For example, uh, if the simulator is queried on p3, the simulator checks against all uh, p2 of x2 values that it has assigned and p1 of x1 values that it has assigned and sees if those form a partial chain. Um, however, uh, if the simulator detects on any 3 consecutive uh, round permutations, the simulator's efficiency is affected and an important part uh, of the indifferentiability proof is to show that the simulator is efficient and this is directly related to the number of partial chains detected. So, let us separate uh, the sets of 3 into 2 parts, one known as the wraparound which consists of rounds 4, 5, 1 and 5, 1, 2. These are exactly those that wrap around uh, the key all uh, the iterated Riemann-Soh construction, and these uh, and detection of such uh, partial chains require a query to the ideal cipher, and uh, these partial chains that don't wrap around uh, can be detected by the simulator on its own without querying the IC. So, how can we prove the efficiency of the simulator? Let me just give a high-level overview of that proof. Um, so, notice as I mentioned for the wraparound uh, partial chains, these require an ideal cipher query. 
So, such ideal cipher queries can in fact be charged to the distinguisher D. I will not mention how, but uh, since the distinguisher D is limited in the number of queries that it can make to its ideal cipher, we claim that at most Q such chains can be detected uh, using these three, uh, using these two sets of three consecutive rounds. However, uh, if you look at uh, these uh, inner uh, inner partial chain detections, these do not require an IC query. Uh, so let's see how to bound those. So these uh, these detections would require the queries at rounds one, two, and three to be defined, and a query at a particular round can be defined only due to a direct distinguisher query, so the distinguisher explicitly querying say P1 or due to preemptive completion of the simulator. So, the simulator does preemptive completion when it detects partial chains and there are two categories of partial chain detections as I mentioned. One is the wraparound chain uh, and the other uh, is the inner, uh, inner partial chain detection. So, notice for uh, the 1, 2, 3 partial chain, uh, it can be detected either due, due to a wraparound partial chain or due to a 3, 4, 5 chain. So, at this point, we have a bound on the number of D queries by just by assumption that the distinguisher is limited in the number of queries it can make to its oracles and we have a bound on the number of wraparound chains uh, by the argument I mentioned earlier. However, we do not have a bound uh, on the 3, 4, 5 chains and this seems circular because in order to bound an inner detect uh, inner partial chain, we need uh, to bound another inner partial chain. However, there is something that comes to our aid uh, which is that the uh, all of the inner partial chains have the round 3 in common. So, instead of arguing about the entire set uh, of the of three rounds uh, in a particular partial chain detection, we can just argue about uh, the number of queries that get defined in this particular round, in particular in round 3. So, again uh, for a query at round 3 to be defined, it can either be due to a distinguisher query or due to preemptive completion of a wraparound chain and it cannot be due to an inner partial chain. Given that, uh, we argue that a chain detected at 3, 4, 5 can be uniquely mapped to a P3 query which we have a bound for and a distinguisher query or to a pair of P3 queries. So, using this high level idea, we can bound the efficiency of the simulator. Uh, so, let me conclude. Uh, we show that the 5 round iterated event Mansour with trivial key schedule is indifferentiable from an ideal cipher. Uh, in order to show that, we show an efficient simulator S using the strategy outline uh, just now, uh, such that no efficient distinguisher making at most Q queries can distinguish between real and ideal with probability Q to the 12 over 2 to the n, where n is the round permutations input output size. Thank you. <laughs>